very common in this area. Um, all this rust after when a woman and, and mind is always uh, unclean, it's very common in this area. And uh, even some ladies have gone through abuse as a child, as a girl. And so what happens is, uh, say, a five-year-old girl gets molested or attacked physically or sexually, the attack her has a spirit, that's why the attacker did it. Right? And the attack of spirits get part of the child. And a bunch of girls, if you talk to quite a few prostitutes, they'll tell you they were sexually molested when they were small. So what spirit did that? Lustful spirit. Just lustful spirits. Because ladies by nature, they're not lustful, usually by nature. Right? Usually men folks can be. But that lustful spirit got transferred to them. And you know, there's this is craving there, and it's just not really known because ladies don't have much to cross from like men do, right? And that's why a bunch of some ladies become prostitutes. And that should give us compassion and say prostitute. So does that spirit multiply? Because it probably it doesn't leave the man, right? Or the molester. It it is transferred or or oh, another spirit, similar spirit can come, invite another spirit. Right? Um, I don't think multiple is the right word, that seems like they're even good. <laughs> uh, but it's somehow most spirits can get attached to a single spirit. Um, now, does the Holy Spirit transfer? No. But when they pray for Moses, or Moses pray for 70 other people, that they also have similar spirit or responsibilities in the Old Testament. Right? Um, they can get influenced by the same spirit. Right? So, spirits don't give birth from heaven, but yet God did say the devil is the father. Very interestingly. You know? The children of the devil is your father. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the spirits can, uh, there are many similar spirits that are the same. Anger, millions of demons. Anger, right? And so, now, Holy Spirit is in you, is in me. Is it multiplied? Is it two different? Or same more spirit. All is in you, is fully in you, and is fully in me. So how is that possible? <laughs> right. Same with demons. Right. Which we don't fully understand because we're not fully in the spirit yet, out of the body yet. Right. But yeah, the, the spirit gets transferred and they become prostitutes. And I know girls have, we have a few ladies here that has uh, sexual struggles, but they couldn't bring it out because so much stigmatized that they shouldn't be having those problems and they couldn't speak out and they were fearful if they spoke out they would be kind of shunned from the family you know? and yet it's because they got molested in the small yes well, if a man has sex with prostitutes right. he takes on those spirits of exactly the prostitute yes. then he goes home and has sex with his wife and he passes that on yeah so yeah goes yeah. On and on. yeah it goes on and on and on yeah yeah see it's good to keep in mind that Things begin in the spirit world. That's why this drill is so important because we get the root of the problem. Things begin, begin, good or bad, good or bad, begin in the spirit world. Spirit realm. Good is God, God is the spirit. Every good thing comes from Him. Every good thing comes from Him. Every good thing comes from Him. And God is the spirit. Every evil thing comes from demons. He's the spirit. Things big in the spirit world. And that's why this understanding of deliverance is so important because we are getting a root of the problem. You're not talking about anger of nation here. You're talking about anger being driven out. You're not talking about anger management here. Anger being cast out. That's why this study and understanding is so important to help people to deal with the root of the problem. Uh, just a few more, then we'll stop in a few minutes. Um, fear is a very common one. Fear of death, sickness, witchcraft, evil, darkness, future, um, attack. Very, very common one. Very common one. Right? I'll tell you one fear I've had for a long time. And I'll tell you how it happened. And I'll tell you how I struggle afterwards. And I think I'm free of it now. Um, totally free. But as a kid, I don't know how old I was. Maybe seven or eight. And my dad was not, I didn't really go with my dad. And uh, recently, because my dad is a businessman, and he was in 
Singapore, Malaysia, looking so hard. Eventually, he lost the business <laughs> and he went uh, bankrupt. But uh, anyway, so I kind of grew up very independent. You know, I got very self built independent and uh, flat sheet of the house. And so, I was a, as a kid, I like, mean, younger than most, and I would go take public buses and go here, go there, and do stuff. And my mom had no idea where I'm going. You know, I was, I was like the outgoing type. And, and I, I still go by, I went to a bus. And this bus was in the back of Sri Lanka before we left. I left here when I was 10. So before that, I got in the bus. And the bus was super, super crowded. I was so crowded, I was squeezed in. Squeezed in. And I think I remember yelling at the, they would call them conductors or the ones who would let people who go off at a certain station or point. And I, I remember yelling, you know, I need to get off the next, next, Stop. I think in, in British they call them halt, next halt. And so, next halt. Stop. But I didn't even hear me. And I was so squ the small, tiny boy squeezed in. And I was small for my age, squeezed in. That fear, and I missed that thing, I didn't know where I would end up in. But I'm here with an adult, with an adult. And as a rebellious kid, I don't know what I was going at the time. Probably. It was not the school, it was somewhere much of I was going as a kid. And usually I was rebellious. <laughs> And you know, I'm doing this, so I was squeezed in the crowd, and I got so fearful. <laughs> I missed my point, and I'm going to end up somewhere, and I'm going to get lost in my own places. And, and so, panic got into me. I still remember as a kid. Panic got into me, and fear got into me. And finally, someone heard someone, someone in the bus heard me yell, and finally, after two or three stops, the bus was flying. And they stopped, and I got off the thing at the wrong state, station. And eventually I got home, but that experience never left me. And you know how I knew that the spirit in the crowd? After, I totally forgot about it, but I knew that it was strong and happened to me. But when I would watch a documentary or something, national, if someone is going to a cave and their body is between a rock or something, that's so tight. I would feel so uncomfortable. Right? And I would remember, when I would go back to what happened to me as a child. Mm -hmm. That being so squeezed in and so crowded, so fearful. <laughs> See, I, I was like that. I think I'm probably free now. But I was like that because it happened to me. And panic set in. And here's a guy in the National Geography, you know. He is going underground cave, whatever it is, and he is diving in, and he is going, he is squeezing in between two rocks. No matter, what if he can get out? And the guy is having a fun time. He was like, he's enjoying it, and he has a cameraman behind him, and he's just being you know, what if he gets stuck between the rock, and what if he gets stuck, and, and, and no one can hear him, even if he yells, no one can hear him, he's so stuck there, and dangerous, he could die there. Why is he doing it? See, it's because of my spirit. It's be so into it. Because you would watch it, it's like, no, nah, that's guy's having fun. It's like, to me, it doesn't make sense. The logical is like evil. It's bad what the guy's doing. You know? I'm, feeling, I'm feeling his pain. You mean the reason I'm feeling his pain? He's having fun. <laughs> He's enjoying his diet. And all because of what I went through. You know, what I went through as a kid. And so, um, I'm not sure why you got the story, but I uh, feel. Fear of being squeezed in, fear of being crowded, fear of being, fear of being trapped in. Trapped in. So, so the fear of being trapped in, for me, with people, could be anything about what it is. Right? And. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Small spaces or. Yeah, tied in, yeah, squeezed in, yeah. Right. Which for you is like, it's okay. You watch the program and yeah, you know, he's doing some research and find them good for him. You know, I would have. Uh, so if that is a spirit and it never actually got cast out, can you sort of like start him up or is that how you would get rid of him then? If you don't have a deliberate session? No, see sometimes you can get delivered by the Spirit of God in the Tabernacle sessions. Right? Some people get delivered from that salvation and they receive Christ in their life and they get deliverance, right? Um, 
someone's pushed at me. And to me, how I know, I think I left this. I watched other documentary after that, I was in trouble. I was in world, I was in fearful after that. So, um, in, in, the, in the Bible College, being a, a Pentecostal seminary, right, in the USA, where I was going for three years, uh, there we did a lot of tongue pray, a lot of praying in tongues. When I say praying in tongues, it means not like what you know, what you think. It's a little praying in tongues. So perhaps at that time I got deliverance, I don't know. Somehow, I don't know why I got set free. I'm not sure where the man happened. And I didn't do it. Um, I didn't do it consciously. Right? But someone could have got knew I need the deliverance, so I gave room into him, and he perhaps brought it up. I brought it up. And I, when I was in Papua New Guinea, I used to drop people like uh, who had Bible studies, and after Bible study, we would not, they would not be able to go home. So I would drop each one home one, one by one. Because the taxi was too expensive, and I used a church bus to drop people home, and I'll take an hour. And, and they would squeeze in in the bus that I would drive in, and I would be perfectly fine with that. Perfectly fine squeezing out right on and drop on home. I'm not in trouble. So perhaps Paul could do that. I want to do that, and he's at the you know, so Yeah, uh, sometimes, but I'm sure you heard testimonies people got free from alcohol, smokes, and drugs, and different things, and of course, some uh, spirits. Uh, but spirit of God did it. With that. But some of them, of course, fear the conscious to cast them out. And fear is one of them that uh, some people still struggle with. But uh, fear. And this can come against the matter of faith. Fear can be attacked. Right? Uh, fear of what if things go wrong. Fear of what if this happens. What if this happens. That can fear. And all this, you feel uncomfortable. You feel bad. You feel awful. And it's, and, and you, it's, it's a funny thing is that, see, in, in my example, I'll stop at this. Uh, when, I would, like, when I had the fear, and when I would see that in the documentary, National Geography, when I would see the guy going to a tight rock space, a lot of logics are going through my head. See, what if his shoulder gets stuck between the two rocks? What if he doesn't know his way out? See, well, I'm thinking logically, but perhaps who's influencing those logics? It's demons. They were feared. Right? See, even sometimes people can speak logically, it could be demon. And they're not talking from a point of peace. They're troubled, but they will come out in a logical way out, or like they argue with you. They'll come out logically, but actually who is fear. What if this happens? What if this happens? What if this goes? What if this goes? That's how I thought. What if no one finds those guys? What if the guys get trapped in personal life? And, and you know, I looked at that a long time ago, uh, not lately, but you know, somehow I would, I would be drawn to this instance like some kid in China fell down a narrow deep well. <laughs> so, why did no one found the kid deep in the well? Or some kid fell into the two narrow walls, you know, deep down, and, and then firefighters had to somehow get the child out and then how to put the rope on. The child was a small toddler and struggled and I would, if I, when I had the spirit, I would read it. I could, start, I could feel the child's pain. I could feel like I said, I'm, I'm going through that myself, that like, like heart is racing. And it's, like, it's like, this is horrible. It's like the worst thing that happened to you. And it is a bad thing to fall between two walls and get stuck in a well. But I'm feeling this, I went through it. And it really affected me and the fear of being in that place. And so, but the way I'm portraying it coming out is very part, very logical. So it's good to keep in mind when you're talking to some people, some people may say they're just trying to talk to a child or a neighbor, trying to convince or something. If they're defending logically, and you feel like, well, maybe I don't have the logical way to that. Some seem stupid, a lot of the answers they have. Don't worry, they could be influenced by demon they come out logical. Doesn't make sense. And the logic they're throwing at you, you have to no answers to those logics. It is like, like you know, what if the guy is stuck in a rock? But he 
you know, that would be brilliant. So <laughs> thought we'd show us my butt. So it's good to keep it in mind, you know, even between spouses, between families, and different things. And someone defending logically too much could be demonic. Does that make sense? Yes. Even sympathy or empathy can be that way. Exactly. Because you can go to a funeral and there's people that are just um, they're crying more than the people that have just lost a loved one because they are somehow affected by death or loss in a past that they never they, they don't yep. have the truth about it. Yeah. And they are confident of the truth. And so they just can't deal with it. Right. And and the, the people who know about their loved one and they know that you know they 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 live in a perspective of eternity, they're all at peace about it. Right. And, and, and the spirits of God. Right. Oh, I've seen other ones too where um, I've been a bunch of films as well. Some people kind of wasting their life, so to speak. And not being productive eternally or spiritually. Right. And if I'm feeling something, they feel so they guilty. Feeling guilty. Oh yeah. man. Just yeah, the victim putting a big show up. Yeah. 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 Oh, if you have a crying and feel something, you're going to happen again. They go all the way to cry. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and one of them, they told me to leave. They, they didn't leave, but I stayed back and said to the people. But uh, anyway, this one. Husband was drunk and uh, he came home and he picked up for a fight with his wife, which is very common there, very common. You'll, you'll see a drama in every half of those people, husband of my fight, it's very common. And so, and she pushed him and she was also supposed to teach one of the religious. And she said, get him, I'm tired of you. And he's tangled and he fell down. And he got up and I think he fell again by himself and then he died. Persecution that she went through, and so we had to support her. She had no male figure to support her. So I had to be there, I had to be there. And me being a foreigner, being with her was a protection for her. How they could have killed her that bad. So I had to be the constant. So when it happened, she calls her woman, happened, I'm not people, I said, I'm there, I'm there. So I ran to the bus, and it's a very remote area, a area, and just the missionary was still alive, I go there. And sit with her, her family members, and the husband's family members came and ransacked the house. Just removed everything out of the house pots and pans and bed, just on the bench. The way they didn't touch her because I was there with her. Because of respect for me as a missionary, as a white man, they would call me in my nation. White man is there, just we touch her, we touch me. And they're afraid of going down the tube. And but they, the damage they removed the house, ransacked the house. And she's a woman. And I would sit outside, open, and a lot of people there. And I'm sitting, and okay, that's the that's the time to someone, you know. And at that point, and uh, she's a woman. If it wasn't for you, I'm I'm, I'm a dead one working right there. And I said, well, I said don't worry. I'm here, if I'm going to try to leave, I'll send another place to be here with you. And things quieted down, and, and she wanted to have the uh, uh, check done on his body. So why are you going to die? Because they accused of pushing him, she did push him, so she wants to check whether he, he got a heart attack or some other reason, not really pulling that. But the husband's family would not have proof. And so then um, she said, woman, can you talk? And so, so this husband's side men, five or six men, came all in a truck and to the church property and, and the lady came too and, and uh, you know, I told them, I'll pay for expense for the post-mortem checkup. And have the checkup done. And uh, they said, no, no, no. I said, no, it's proper. Because then we will stop accusing her wrongfully and we'll check and Finally, they argue, reason, and because I said it, they could say no. And these are big guys with bones and strong men from the villages, you know. And there, there are two groups of people one from the city, just so civilized, so good known people. Then there are people from the village, two extreme types of people there. <laughs> the city is like Winnipeg, 
skyscrapers and hotels and nice freeways and beautiful city, the capital. You leave the capital, you go to the village, the real village, the village and they can be rough, aggressive, um, barbaric. So, yeah, then uh, they found out that his heart was blood, one man was blood. That's why he died, not because he pushed. And so she said, you know how living that is? That is so living to know that when I did not kill my husband, that is so living. Otherwise, can you imagine living in the condemnation? Must take a life. And we thank God that in the final she got the first time. God has proved it. You know? And they shut up after that. But um, yeah, I can tell stories about many people like that. But I enjoy working there. It's a beautiful mission field. We'll stop here and we'll pick up. We have one more Wednesday, next Wednesday. We'll finish this list. Um, I have more to explain. I think about maybe two dozen things to talk about. And just only one more study uh, next week. Then it's the end of June. Then we'll pick up again in September. All, right. um, all the rest, kind of teacher in July and August. Um, about the study.